Hello, Tidal Pool travelers. Today we are exploring Botanical Beach, which is this world famous beach featuring cool tidal pools. It's located about five kilometers south of Port Renfrew, or about two hours west of Victoria. It's an easy 1.5 kilometer hike down to a beach, and there's about a 2.5 kilometer loop in total. So this is a hike that can be enjoyed by people of all ages and has some great examples of West Coast nature. So come along with me, let's explore this place and see some cool stuff. So this might be obvious, but you're gonna to wanna to check the tide charts before coming to Botanical Beach in order to see the exposed tide pools. There are tide charts just for Botanical Beach itself. So if you just Google tide chart Botanical Beach, you should be able to find something, but Port Renfrew works as well. We kind of went here on a whim, but we were lucky in that the low tide is about 11.20 today. So we are still approaching low tide. And so that gives you the most access to the tide pools and all the crazy creatures that live within. Here is a map of Juan de Fuca Provincial Park with the Botanical Beach loop in yellow. The route you pick should depend on who you are visiting with and the tide. Both sections of trail leading from the parking lot to the coast are wide gravel paths that are accessible. If you are traveling with someone with mobility issues or maybe a small child, I'd recommend traveling in the clockwise direction and beelining it to Botanical Beach. I'd also suggest that route if you are visiting when the tide is coming in, just so you can get to the tide pools and enjoy them before they are submerged. Otherwise, I'd recommend traveling a counterclockwise route you will have an option to visit Botany Bay, which is a gorgeous and complex rocky coastline and worth a visit. Some people might find the connector between Botany Bay and Botanical Beach challenging. There are some mud puddles, stepping stones, and roots that could make passing this area difficult for some. If you are visiting at low tide, there is also the option to traveling along the shore in blue is the route we took. Now the downside to this is you will bypass some of the trail in the forest, which is quite beautiful. There are some really interesting gnarled trees and the forest with cedar, hemlock and spruce are very beautiful. It's also a great chance to see one of my favorite species here on Vancouver Island, the Pacific Banana Slug. So if you decide to take the shoreline route, I'd suggest backtracking along the forest route as neither of the connectors are really all that interesting. If you're looking to get a little bit more exercise, the Juan de Fuca Trail extends east from Botanical Beach. Now, if you wanna learn about these species in these tidal pools, there are some guides you can get. I believe in Port Renfrew, you can pick up a laminated cheat sheet sort of thing. But if you don't wanna spend any money, what I would recommend doing is downloading the iNaturalist app. And then before arriving at Botanical Beach, put in Botanical Beach as a location and you can scroll through the observations made here and that will give you a short list of all the species to keep an eye out for. You might want to do that ahead of time though, so that information is cached on your phone because cell coverage is pretty spotty here. And one thing too, if you're a Canadian, watch out for roaming charges because you will connect to the US networks across the way. Botanical Beach gets thousands of visitors and it seems to be in pretty good condition, but I'd really advise people to just watch their step and to try to keep the natural splendor of this place intact. It's pretty easy to avoid the marine creatures just by sticking on the rocks and hopping to and fro. From an ecological standpoint, tidal pools are really fascinating and they are one of the most well-studied ecosystems. Given the environmental extremes in a tidal pool, they are tough places to live. The organisms have to be able to survive when the tide goes out and the water temperature increases in the tidal pool or evaporates altogether. For this reason, the species that have a competitive edge are often those that dominate the lower levels of the tidal pools. In order to survive in these environments, the species that can't beat out those species are often adapted to avoid drying out and frying in the heat. So one of the coolest species here are these gooseneck barnacles. They are these strange barnacles with these sort of fleshy projections coming from their shell and that's how they anchor onto the substrate. So pretty unique species and something you definitely want to keep an eye out for. Reddish purple things are a species of coralline algae that grow in the tidal pools. 
One of my favorite species found at Botanical Beach is the giant green anemone. These anemones can grow up to about a foot wide, 30 centimeters or so. Their bright green color is due in part to a symbiotic relationship with photosynthetic microorganisms that live inside of it. These organisms provide the anemone with food, but these anemones are also predators. They eat a variety of macroinvertebrates, including crabs and mussels. There has even been documented cases of them eating birds. Another common yet incredible species found at Botanical Beach is the Pacific Purple Sea Urchin, which use their self-sharpening teeth to excavate little burrows in the bedrock. Many of these pools are like giant urchin apartment complexes. If you stick your head under the water, you can hear them chewing away. Give it a try. These are some of the common species you'll see at Botanical Beach, but it's really the uncommon species to look out for. Keep your eyes peeled for interesting creatures like nudibranch, sea slugs, or Pacific giant octopus. So it's pretty amazing all the different types of brown algae that we have here from the rockweed closer to the shore to the bull kelp out in the ocean. The bull kelp form these magnificent kelp forests which are incredible productive ecosystems home to spectacular species like rockfish and sea otters and they are really one of the natural wonders of the Pacific Northwest and one of the things that truly makes this area special. So while you're looking down at all the incredible marine life, don't forget to look up once in a while to look for some birds. There are some incredible pelagic seabirds you can see from here, and there are often bald eagles foraging over the water too, which makes for a great sight. Botanical Beach is a beautiful place and definitely worth the trip. The marine life is fantastic and the forests are pretty spectacular too. So I would recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy tide pooling.